that, obviously. I mean, that's just good stuff. And then finally, and this is the big one, you count on the left to help you out. And this is where this nefarious alliance that I've been talking about between the alt-right and the hardcore left comes in. And believe you me, the radical left will. I mean, we've seen proof of it here tonight. I'm here decrying for 40 minutes the evils of the alt-right and white supremacism, and there are people up there calling me an alt-right white supremacist. Okay, the left will literally call anybody on the right alt-right, even if we say vocally and in no uncertain terms that the alt-right is pure, unbridled, vile garbage. Even if members of the alt-right target those people on the mainstream right. Even if Donald Trump condemns the worldview. Listen, you can argue with anything mainstream conservatives say. It's a free country. We disagree with each other pretty frequently, but there's no doubt that mainstream conservatives are pretty easily distinguishable from the alt-right, but it doesn't matter. The media will lie about this anyway. So the Boston Globe will call my website, The Daily Wire, an alt-right outpost. We force them to recant. The Economist will call me the alt-right sage without the rage. We'll force them to recant. Over at Boston University, where I'm speaking next week, they're festooning posters of my face with a Hitler mustache, which makes perfect sense. <laughs> Students at this university will mob people trying to put up posters for a lecture. They'll tear down banners advertising the speech and replace it with a banner reading, Be Tolerant, Accept Racism. I challenge you to find anything in this speech or anything else I have said that is racist. Really, I'm waiting. Operators on standby. They'll issue a flyer that literally depicts me as a cockroach on a bottle of bug spray with the label Ben Be Gone. I do love that one, I will say. That was pretty great. <laughs> I think that my favorite thing about that is that these people, they hear dog whistles everywhere. Right? Donald Trump will say something and they will, oh, it's a dog whistle. I say Judeo-Christian values. And then they say, oh, that's a dog whistle. When I say Judeo-Christian values, I mean white people. <laughs> Which is obviously untrue. Dog whistles everywhere, just dog whistles everywhere. And then they put out a poster literally with an Orthodox Jew on a bottle of extermination spray with me as a bug. That's not a dog whistle. That's you howling at the moon. I mean, my God. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, we just didn't know. We just, Funny, your, your antenna were up real high in terms of sensitivity for other groups. Weird that your antenna were just completely non-functional when it came to the Jews who don't rank on your intersectional hierarchy of victimhood. Very odd. For every other group, we have to be careful of dog whistles that don't even make sense. When it comes to the Jews, you're like, I'll put them on a bottle of Bug Be Gone, this Jew right here. Maybe it's, I have a feeling, it might be because, unfortunately, for the intersectional left, Jews don't actually count as a quote-unquote minority group. Right? The only minority groups are the ones that they perceive are victimized. Jews aren't victimized enough, despite the fact that on a per capita basis, Jews are the most victimized group in the United States by hate crimes. And it isn't particularly close, by the way. But it's not just the students at this university. The media will suggest that President Trump is in league with the alt-right. Even at this late date, they'll neglect the fact that Trump has repeatedly condemned white supremacism, that he has purged his administration of people who were remotely friendly with the alt-right, people like Steve Bannon. They'll simply overlook that Trump isn't a white supremacist. They'll declare that the MAGA hat is indeed a Nazi swastika. So, clarification for people on the left who apparently can't listen or read. If someone believes that all men are created equal, and men means like mankind, that's, that's what the word meant when it was written in the Declaration of Independence, you idiots. If someone believes that all men are created equal, that every American should have equality before the law, in free market capitalism, in small government, in equal rights for people of all races, that person is not on the alt-right. In fact, they despise the alt-right, and the alt-right despises them. But people on the left know this, they just prefer the lie. Why? Because their goal is to delegitimize the entire right. The goal is to smear the entire right with the label alt-right, to shut the Overton window to everybody who's anywhere to the right of Hillary Clinton. That's precisely why the New York Times splashed a photo collage on their front page of me and Milton Friedman and Dave Rubin and Richard Spencer. The goal was to lump everybody together and then suggest that we are radicalizing the American population as though Richard Spencer and I have a damn thing in common. For the first, for the first thing I can read, Political correctness is a weapon for the left, but it's also a weapon for the alt-right. Harvard professor Steven Pinker, who the left tried to cancel for saying this, made this clear last year. He was saying that political correctness is a way for the left to shut down debate. By shutting down the debate, they actually open the door to the alt-right because they say, you can't ask certain questions. Then the questions get asked, they shut it down, and people go, wait, I'll just look online for the answer, and the first answer they find might be something from an alt-right website, and they start to take it more seriously, right? This is something Steven Pinker said, so the left called them alt-right and shut them down. There's something that's the most nefarious of all when it comes to these sort of de facto playing off each other political lines between the far left and, and the alt-right, and that is that they actually mirror themselves in politics and culture. They both have an identity politics view. As I say, the left's view of American politics is that Americans can be identified by group. Americans are black or Hispanic or white or green or Jewish or lesbian 
or in the best of all possible worlds, a half Native American, half black, little person who is gender fluid. Right? If, you, if, you, if you're on the left, you don't describe people by their belief system or by what they do, you describe them by their attributes. You describe them by group attributes. And they have a whole intersectional hierarchy deciding how victimized you are based on how many of these boxes you check. The only difference between the left and the alt-right is that they reverse the hierarchy, meaning that the left thinks that hierarchy is bad. Right? They create this hierarchy where white people are the most powerful, and then progressively you go all the way down to the bottom, and you get to the LGBT people, and those are the people who are the least powerful according to this hierarchy. And they say that hierarchy is bad, we should just flip the hierarchy. And then you have the alt-right, and they say, no, 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 the hierarchy is good, and we should keep the hierarchy the way that it is. And then there's all the rest of us who are like, what hierarchy? There shouldn't be a hierarchy. What the hell are you talking about? We're individuals. We live in a free country. All of this is terrible for the country. It's terrible for the discourse. We should be able to ask tough questions and answer them. We should. We should be able to have conversations. And we should also be able to see the difference between good, fact-based, rational answers and identity politics bullshit pandering, which is a specialty, unfortunately, of both the radical left and the alt-right. But the left won't have the conversation. The alt-right really doesn't want to either. They prefer memeing and trolling and all the rest. So here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Anyone on the right or left who wants to have an actual conversation about tough issues that isn't the bumper sticker, but is also not willing to pretend that ugly bigotry is decency, or that identity politics reflects truth, or that trollish memeing is a substitute for an actual worldview. Let's have the conversation. Thanks so much. Happy to take your questions.